Hey everyone, how are you doing? Um, in this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to create a faction for our AI and also set up a simple AI that fights the player. Okay. Um, before we start, just something. Uh, this is basically inside of my game where I set it up. So there's, you know, I have animations and stuff like that that you should have already set up. Um, and also, you will see the AI look slightly different like uh, there will be some variables that would change and in general it looks a little bit different um, but the, the setup itself is pretty much exactly the same because this is basically the new version of the AI I'm working on it will come out in maybe like two to three months but basically I overhauled the whole thing for Unreal Engine 5 um, it's still a bit out to be finished um, but in general just something um, to note if something doesn't look exactly the same. There's a general uh, idea how uh, to set up the AI and how to direct the AI is the same. Um, just so you know, sometimes it looks a bit different, but uh, it shouldn't really matter. Okay, that out of the way. Let's go and think about how we set this up, okay? If you set up an AI and you want to think about um, that you have different factions, right? For example, you have samurai, bandits, and, and knights, and stuff like that, um, and all kind of have a relationship with each other, right? So maybe knights and bandits work together for whatever reason, but the uh, uh, samurai is their common enemy, right? Something like this. So you wanna have a, a, a rough idea how you want to do it, right? And if you have a rough idea, what we're gonna do is first, before we actually create an AI, that uh, has all the animations and everything set up. What we want to do is we want to create a faction blueprint, you could say. Okay, as you can see here, we have zombie base, uh, we have zombies, we have bandits, and we have minions, right? For my and what we're gonna create together is basically we want to create the faction for uh, of of knights, right? So a knight faction, and we're gonna go and we set it up uh, from scratch, okay? So first thing we want to do is we're going to go to our base um, AI. So here it's called uh, face AI base in your, in the older version, it's called uh, AI base, I, I believe. Um, but all we're going to do is we're going to create a child blueprint class. And we're going to call this BP Knight and base. Okay, that's all we're going to do. And we're going to move it to our faction folder, right? So we have that here. We open it up and uh, just to save a little bit of time, what we also open up is our bandit, right? This is already a faction, it's already set up. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it up here, but we can copy some things over just to keep things a little bit faster for the tutorial, right? So as you can see here in the new AI, we don't have a trigger component where we store basically the tags. All we're gonna do here is we're gonna go tag um, and we already set up here our enemies for the bandits. If we go to idle and go to tags, we see we have already a knight faction. We just copy this. Uh, I would always advise you to copy things over simply because then you know it's 100% correct. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to hear faction. We already have a knight faction that's also new. Before it was, I think, in the trigger component, so maybe you have to set it there. Um, apart from that, we don't really gonna change here anything um, because it's just a general setup. Um, maybe later we're gonna go and add some things, but now we wanna move on to the face AI and we're gonna go to general settings because here now is also, oh no, it's not here. Um, it's somewhere else, I guess. Um, oh no, oh yeah, it's in general settings. Um, for some reason, they are not in the same folder. Got to be fixed. We're going to here faction also set it to knight. And here you can see also we have an enemy type. Uh, swordsman, tank, mage, archer, gunner. Uh, that's We have now a new um, group coordinator that's going to use that. It's not in the current version, but it's going to be in the updated version where we can kind of like coordinate attacks from different enemy types. So if you fight uh, several um, swordsmen, um, you can say, oh, only one swordman will attack you at a time, or two, or three, or four, 
however many you have basically right and then we have a stun lock which is basically says okay if we go in hit and it gets damage we can say oh we can only play uh, go to the hit phase every five seconds for example so you cannot uh, stun lock an enemy but that's not really the point at the moment what we want to do now we close this up to make it a little bit more easy to see um we're gonna go first to idle settings okay what we want to do here now is we want to set up a basic face right how many how fast does he walk 180 is for me i always like it and what we can do here now is we go to bandit base well you you just set it up um, and we can just copy this over to make it a bit more faster so later on if you have a base class already and you create a new faction you can copy stuff over and change it uh so it's a bit easier so we paste it in here and as you can see here now a target would also be a knight um you change that to bandit or whatever you have right Bandit, here we go. Because we copied this from Bandit, of course, and the target is no Bandit, but there's a Knight. So we change the Knight here to Bandit. And now what we can do is we copy this. And what we're gonna search now is we're gonna search for targets. And as you can see here, oh, targets, there we go. As you can see here, targets is now in here. But here it's not set up, but what you can do is you just copy this and with shift and then simple uh, left clicking on other targets you automatically copy it in and what we want to do now is we copy this in every target variable you can find right it's a lot of uh, copy paste because the phases itself they're set up the same way right um, and of course if here's like some phases where you don't want to have targets um, or the same targets you just change them there but the idea behind having um, a faction that is basically a base blueprint for that later on we will basically make uh, not basically we will make child blueprint of this class and everything in this child blueprint class will already set up and if we make changes in here it will automatically be changed in the child blueprint classes that means we can change the targets of this um of this uh knight faction if let's say later on the samurai are friends right uh we can just ch change it here and everything will be set up um and you don't have to go in every single ai and change it there okay so uh, that's a, a, a general a good idea to kind of like keep everything like in child blueprint classes so you, you, you don't have to make changes in every single AI okay but now we have uh, all the targets here and we go here and now we have to check in here so we have here idle settings and now we have to think okay how do we want to make it that the AI um, catches basically other enemies right um, and what I like to do is uh, I use the in range, but uh, normally I think people like to do the inside triggers. So if, if an enemy is in sight, it will trigger something. We have that already set up here in the in range triggers. We copy this as well and we just simply uh, paste it in here. All right, so let's close this. So now as you can see here in range, if we open this up, as you can see here, it's very simple. It's the same as in your AI. We have an actor tag, a summon, and then a distance, 2000. What is the next phase? It's taunt if you see a summon, and we want to have line of sight, okay? Um, and yeah, and we have that now for every single um, target, basically, right? We have here summons, knights, that we're gonna change to bandits <laughs> bandit ba bandit right uh, let me check this real quick just so we have the bandit yes bandit yeah we, we copied it over i remember so uh band and make sure it's written correctly bandit there we go so we have bandit neutral enemy samurai and player and as you can see here if if in, in the idle settings, 
right? If he is in the idle phase, right? So that's a normal phase you normally do. You can change it, but normally you use probably idle phase. If he sees like a bandit, he goes into the taunt phase. So that's basically in a phase where he just like does some stuff to say, hey, I see you and I'm gonna attack you soon, right? Um, and from there we go into the combat phases. But basically that's how it works. You, you are in one phase and you see someone and you transition to another phase, okay? And we set it up here. And now what we wanna do is we copy this as well, right? And now what we do is we search here in range. So we search what we already set up in the idle settings. As you see, we copy this and we do the same thing. We copy it over to other in range variables, but this time we don't copy it in every single phase because this is only basically the start of the combat, right? So you don't want to have that, for example, in the attack phase. If you have it in here, he goes, he wants to attack, but then he triggers, uh, uh, he has an in range trigger and he will go back to taunt and then he will stuck in a loop and he will never attack. So if we have now this in range trigger set up, we want to think, okay, where else will he start to go into combat mode um, when he sees something? So it's definitely investigate, right? If he investigates something and finds something in the investigation, um, it's probably also search, right? And in patrol as well. And probably, maybe we could put it in follow, but let's not do that. Um, optional, we it's optional, so we don't set up anything there. We could do it in guard mode. That's like a new phase, you don't have that. Um, but for now, we don't do that here. And that's basically all. So we put it in investigate, search, patrol, and idle. And that's all we're gonna do because the other phases are all combat, so we don't have any in range triggers there. Okay. So and and for and just as an example, what you can use in range triggers as well for you can for example also say it's maybe a, a ranged AI, right? But what you can do say uh, you copy here like you make an in range trigger. That's just a little tip from me. Uh, and you have like an in range trigger under range here. And what you can say if for example, within 500 or 450 units, uh, oh wait, 450 units is the player. So the player basically comes close to the AI to attack. What he will do is he will attack himself. So he basically stops doing range attacks and starts doing melee attacks if the player comes too close, right? That's that's one way how you can use in range triggers as well. But we don't gonna set that up here for now um, because now we basically, we are nearly done. Um, we wanna set up only one more thing. And what we're gonna search now is transitions. That's uh, something that's very different now from, not very, but a bit different from what it was before. What you will see in your AI is basically maybe uh, three different variables with uh, transitions that you can set. We changed that to an array, so you're not focused, you're not uh, like stuck to just one uh, of three uh, arrays. Um, we can now add, as <laughs> now let me rephrase that, that was not good spoken. Uh, before in your AI at the moment, what you have is you have three variables and he chooses one of these, right? It was kind of like, it's nice setup, but it was kind of like constraints in certain areas. Um, but what you want to do now is we have here different, we have here an array for transitions, So you can add here as many uh, possible transitions as you want. And these transitions, what they actually do is basically once this phase is over, right? Once he attacked, for example, he will go to another phase, right? He will cycle between phases um, to do basically, you know, the combat phase and stuff like that. So we wanna set that up now. Um, and let's start with attacks, right? So after he attacked, uh, you know, the first attack maybe, 
he goes maybe to attack two, or he goes to defend, or he goes to attack three, right? And then if he goes to attack two, and that is finished, maybe he goes back to one, maybe he goes to three, but there's now a higher chance to go to defend. So what we do, we add two times go to defend, right? So as you can see here in the first melee attack, we have two attack phases and one defend. So defend is a 33% chance um, to, to pick that. And now that we are in the second attack, um, we basically have a 50% chance that he goes to defense. And then we go to three. And here we basically do it a bit more. We go here, there is now like a 60% chance that he goes to defend <laughs> here and he might go to one or he might go to two and as you can see here now um we are very uh we, we can be very precise in how much percentage we can set up where he goes to what phase right um but yeah so we have these attacks set up um now we go to defend oh here defense and let's say after defense, um, he goes here, but that's actually useless because the way we set up our um, behavior tree, uh, we actually go out of defense uh, and the same for ranged uh, with a delay trigger. And we set that up afterwards, okay? So, but now let's say you've been hit and you are in hit phase. Um, we're gonna add here and you're gonna maybe go to attack or you go to defend. If you're stunned and the stun is over, you maybe go to attack or you maybe simply go to defend. If you taunt it, we definitely want to uh, mostly attack afterwards, but there's also like a 33% chance that you go after the taunt to defend. So you basically go to taunt and then you, you circle around the player or the enemy a little bit and then you attack, okay? Uh, after you dodge, maybe you counter attack or you go to defend. And as you can see, it's, it's very repetitive, right? But because we have several choices, it will cycle very nicely between these um, transitions um, and will it will feel very natural. The, 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 the fight will feel very natural, but in terms of setup, you will see, as you can see, it's very, it's very uh, an easy way and a repetitive way to set up because everything always works the same, all right? After a block, maybe you do this, maybe defend, or maybe you attack, right? Um, and then we go here, and, and, and you see in these non-combat phases, uh, you have that in your AI as well. Um, we don't really use the transition. So you don't really have to set up everything, anything here, right? It's, it's mostly used for combat where we have a lot of transitioning happening. So, but now we want to set up here defense, right? So we go here and we say um, delay. So we search for the delay and we're going to go to ranged. So let's say after four seconds plus minus one we go to defend if we are a ranged attacker and the same goes for defense let's say three plus minus one and we go to attack right so after every defense he goes on the attack right and we start with attack phase one um Yes, and uh, this is set up now. And there's one more thing we have to set up and then we're finished with our faction, okay? So we search for messages. And what messages are basically, uh, messages float through the air and if the AI picks up on a message and in the face that it is at the moment, um, the message corresponds to something, um, it will change to a specific face, okay? So as you can see here, we banned it. And here's already everything set up. We copy that, and this is from the idle phase. And we go here to idle, and we can simply paste it in. And here's the nice thing, you can just keep it as it is, because um, what's happening here is it, it just looks for messages, not for any enemy tags. So if this AI gets damaged and it blocks, it has a block chance, it sends automatically a message 
to itself, right? The same goes for damage and the same goes for stun. And threat is something you can say, for example, on attack of the player, he sends out an area message of threat. And if an AI is close by, he will go to taunt. For That's, for example, for guards, right? So if, if you are a guard, he doesn't attack the player, but the player, if the, the player attacks something and is in range of this guard, this guard will pick up the message and go to threat and will attack the player. Okay, and lore is basically for investigate, right? Um, yeah, and we copy this to a few things, for example, patrol. So same thing, if you get attacked, if you get damaged, stun, threat. Here we go, search settings, we paste it in here. Um, investigate, we paste it in here, but we delete the lore because it's already investigating, so we don't need to send that again. Um, and then combat, here we do the same thing, except we change these messages a little bit. We don't need that because it's already fighting, so it doesn't need to be distracted. We have block, we have damage, we have stun, we have threat, which we don't need, and we threat actually exchange that for dodge. And if he gets a dodge message, he gonna go to dodge. All right, so this is basically the setup for the combat and we copy this and we can simply paste this in here. So, and here's uh, something that's important. On hit, on stun, on taunt, we maybe want to have a few different ones. For example, dodge doesn't need to have this dodge message, doesn't need, no, can have stun can have damage and a block, maybe not. Let's not do the block one here. So we only have these messages in here because these are mostly actually states that trigger with a message. So you don't actually need to set up messages there because you know, they kind of could interfere with each other, right? But taunt, we maybe want to set that up to these. Um, that's very good. Now all the messages are set up. We save this and basically now our faction is complete. You know, so we have our attack. Our attack here defines what faction this is. Again, you have to set up probably in your trigger uh, component here. In this version, we have everything compiled in just the face uh, AI component. Um, and yeah, then here we have really everything um, set up for basic usage. Um, and we close this. Just close. And now we have a faction called Knight. And now we want to create a Knight character, a uh, Knight AI. So what we're going to do is we copy this, call Knight. So we have a folder with all our Knight AIs. We go to a faction and we say here, Knight, we create a child blueprint. And this is a Knight swords, Swordsman. There we go. We copy this to here. And now if we open this, as you can see here, if we go to tag, we have our tag here. If we go to face AI and we search for targets, all the targets is set up because it's a child blueprint. Everything goes here. And now another cool thing, because we have a child blueprint of this, we can now go into factions, open the night up. What we're going to do now is we go to viewport uh, and I have a few uh, meshes in here already. Let's go to our medieval infantry. And we're gonna just choose maybe this one, open it up. Yeah, let's choose this one, okay? This is our base knight. We put it in here, as you can see here now. Uh, our knight has also now a, um, a mesh like a, that is specific to this thing. And if we go back here, this is now actually the, the, the child blueprint we have. The mesh is already set up now. Um, because everything we change in the base class can change here, but everything we change here 
doesn't go back to to the base class so if we want a different mesh we just set here a different mesh and that's no problem right and now because we have everything set up everything now to make this working to actually fight is two things first the base pose is very important the base pose is basically um for the animation blueprint how what locomotion it should use right and we want to use the sort base pose in the combat phases in the non-combat phases we just use a normal pose but here we copy this and put it all in uh, that's the wrong one let's go back non-combat here put it here to sort i always open this why so we go here everything goes in right except for one we go defense we have a specific state or i set up a specific state for like when he's like ready to block and that is in the overlay sword defense l right so this part is done and now just to save a little bit of time we already have uh in another faction we already have a swordsman what we can do is we simply go in here search for animations uh and face AI, here we go and now we can just go here attack let's copy the animations and um, we go here also anim um we paste it in and we just copy it over it's just like for showcase right so copy this paste we probably have here some taunt animations um these by the way are the animations i think from kubalt from the marketplace are really good i can just recommend them um paste and we go block animations paste it in and then we search for hit because we have like uh for hit we have basically now uh depending on how he's gonna be hit from a certain position uh, we have a certain um certain animations depending on where you hit where you're gonna be hit so we copy this in here so I see you just copy it over if, if you have already a class um, and you need to uh, copy that over if it's like the same class you can just copy the animations over so now we have this and just where we talk about this actually we forgot something if we go now here to speed as you can see everything is 600 it's not so cool what we can do now is we can go and that's the power by using like a base class for your factions we can simply go into the faction knight to face ai walks uh, it's just speed speed uh, movement speed and now we just set up basically um, for each phase how fast it should be right so my normal speed is normally 180 or 320 yours might be different uh, patrol all these are pretty low speeds but the moment they go into attack they're a little bit faster with 320 uh there we go and set it here and um, yeah stun you don't want to be able to move taunt don't know well, maybe move to get close dodge 320 and block this so and now that we set up all the movement speed if we save this out we can check here and as you can see here all the movement speeds are carried over from our um from our base knight class and with this if we now drag in our uh knight that we created here 
we haven't set up a weapon yet, um, but you know, you should have that up, set that up already. But now if we go in here, it should work out if we go close. Yeah, and as you can see, he saw us and he's now going through the motions of attacking us. And that's basically it, how you create a faction class and a simple um, melee enemy.